And I think you already mentioned what would likely happen next, which is that a nucleophile would attack. And again... Or couldn't there be like an E2 where it steals an H, so it's... Great, yeah. Very good. Absolutely. So um, we could either have a nucleophile attack or a base. We could either have the nucleophile attack the carbocation, or as we saw last time, we could have a base steal a proton from the beta carbon. That would be an E1 reaction. Um, so that's right. Um, probably yeah. HSO4 minus. Yeah. OK, good. So uh, and now, again, we could get by with a relatively weak nucleophile or base because of this big positive charge here. So this might just be a neutral nucleophile. It's still going to be able to attack a carbocation. So the key point here is, uh, again, acids give you better leaving groups and electrophiles. Here it was kind of a sequential process. First it gave us a better leaving group, and after the leaving group left, we had a good electrophile, um, which was susceptible to attack by nucleophiles, but also by base. And it's great that you remember that sulfates are not nucleophiles. So this might be useful if we were doing E1 to take the proton, but it's not going to be the nucleophile. Um, that's why this is a good acid to use if you don't want it to compete with the nucleophile. Um, so then we could have a nucleophile attack. So this is an interesting thing about alcohols. They don't have good leaving groups, but it's not hard to give them good leaving groups by using an acid. All right, and I think he also talked about um, an alcohol plus base. Yes. Okay, so. Let's try to predict what would happen here. So the base would now steal the H. Very good. And as a technicality, you saw that we might move the counter ion over here to balance out the negative charge. That's just a technicality. Um, good. So um, this is not a very acidic proton. It doesn't just lose its proton to the drop of a hat, but this is a very strong base. So it's going to be strong enough to, to some extent, deprotonate this. Um, is there anything that might happen next? Um, oxygen can act as a nucleophile, or if there was a good leaving group on the carbon chain that could attack itself. Oh, that's an interesting point. It could attack itself. That would mean it would still be acting like a nucleophile then. Oh, yeah, so it could be acting like a nucleophile in either an intra or intermolecular reaction. So that's a good point. That actually is very common. It's good to remember that. It is very common to use alcohols for intramolecular reactions, just like you said. So um, for example, I think we saw last term, that was one of the ways we learned to make epoxides. Mm -hmm. If there was a leaving group on the beta carbon here, now that the oxygen is a nucleophile, it could just turn right around and attack here. That would be a pretty strange ring, but that actually reaction still does happen. Um, and it would be even easier if the uh, leaving group was further away, so we were forming a five or a six membered ring. But actually, this is a, a way to form epoxides. You can form the three membered ring this way as well. We learned about using MCPBA last term to form epoxides, but this is another way that you can form epoxides. So it's good that you remember that. So that is, um, so we've, uh, you can turn an alcohol into a better nucleophile, and then it can attack either another molecule, or very, it's very common to use it to attack itself. Um, I should mention, if there are no good electrophiles around, then we'll just have to accept this as the final product. So this could be the final product if there were no good electrophiles around, but if there is a good electrophile, we have to go through another step. Um, sometimes nature has to accept that there's no way to get rid of the charge, but it's going to look for a way to get rid of the charge. So what do nucleophiles do to a, I'm sorry, what do bases do to a molecule? Bases deprotonate it to make it a better nucleophile. Perfect. Bases make molecules into better nucleophiles. And what do acids do? They make molecule, they give molecules better leaving groups and electrophiles. You use an acid to make a molecule have a, a better electrophile and a better leaving group, and you use a base to give it a better nucleophile. That's the general principle that we're going to use for the whole rest of the course. 
because bases tend to give things negative charges, which make them into better nucleophiles. And acids tend to give things positive charges, which tend to give them atoms that are better leaving groups and better electrophiles. Okay. Okay. All right, so the interesting thing about an alcohol is that it reacts interestingly with both acids and bases. Okay, so we did the epoxide. All right, and now very important is a ketone. How would a ketone react with a nucleophile or a base? Yeah, that's Wait, very important. Isn't that what we did all through before? Partly. So first, very briefly, how would the nucleophile, how would the ketone react with the nucleophile? It would attack the carbonyl carbon. All right, and then there'll be more things happening. If it's category one, we'll just protonate the oxygen. But if it's category two or three, we'll have more nucleophilic attacks. We don't need to review that because we were just looking at that. But we didn't talk about what happens when there's a base. This is harder than the other examples we've done because this is not a review. Um, so let's say this is a good symbol for a strong base. Here we have a symbol for a strong base because my mind is blank. I can't remember the base that we usually use here. So let's say we have a strong base. Now, what, what do bases like to do? To probate, to me. Um, good. Uh, yeah, they take protons. Yeah. Good. But and they so can they only take a proton that's relatively willing to leave. They can't just take any old proton. Now, this is new, new material. Are there any protons here that would be good to be taken? Not the gamma or beta ones. Any particular reason for that? Because they're um, slightly acidic, because they're. Um, Thing to do with the electrophile. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, well, we didn't really come up with the answer there, but um, that makes sense because this, this is a bit of a new topic we haven't talked about yet. Okay, now by the way, point to the alpha carbon. Turns out this is not the alpha carbon because remember we call this the carbonyl carbon. Oh, okay, so the alpha carbon. This is the alpha carbon. The, the naming is a little bit different than from an alcohol. In an alcohol, the alpha carbon is the carbon that's connected to the oxygen. And you could also call the alpha carbon the alcohol carbon. But in a carbonyl, the alpha carbon is adjacent to the carbonyl carbon. So there's a little bit of an inconsistency with the name we used last term. Last term, the alpha carbon was always connected to the electronegative atom. But for a aldehyde or for, well, for carbonyls, we help call this carbon the carbonyl carbon. So this is the alpha carbon. Here we have two alpha carbons. And then these would be beta. That's going to be a crucial term for the whole rest of the course. Um, the alpha carbon of an aldehyde or a ketone. So it's important to know the alpha carbon is not the carbonyl carbon. Okay. Now it turns out that alpha carbons are acidic. This is just brand new material, so we have to figure out why, why alpha carbons are acidic. Well, let's show what the intermediate would be if the alpha carbon loses its proton. So let's draw the mechanism and see what the intermediate would be if the alpha carbon loses its proton. So the base steals the proton. All right, and then? And then that one would go with the oxygen. That's a perfectly reasonable way to draw it. That's good. The simplest way to draw it is just to show, let me write this out more. So what you were asking is, what's going to happen to this pair of electrons? Well, the simplest thing to say is that this forms a lone pair here. It would just be a like an enol like transformation or no? Oh. Because like if you had the double bond between the carbons and the oxygen, you would just like have to turn it back into that. Yeah, I'm surprised that you came up with that term enolate, because you guys haven't covered that this term yet. I remember the definition the last term? Yeah. Yeah, okay, that's very good. It turns out that enols and enolates are going to be crucial next week and the week after that. So it's good that you're remembering that. That that's right. This is called an enolate. 
I don't think we even dealt with enolates last term. We just dealt with enols, if I recall. But uh, yeah, this is uh, similar to the enols we saw last term. So we won't get into too much detail here because your instructor will be introducing this next week or the week after. Um, however, um, the key thing here is the base was able to take the proton. Now, is it usually possible to take protons from carbons? No. No, we don't usually think of carbons as acidic. So this is unusual. There must be something that is giving, that is stabilizing this negative charge. And I think, I think you may have already identified that a little bit. Resonance. Yeah, it's resonance stabilized because there's another resonance form. Well, the negative charge is up here, and resonance is a very powerful way to stabilize a charge. 